hinted about Coke and Gillette's current valuations and also about their great prospects for the future. But in the past year, both stocks have been down 30 to 50 percent from their highs. How much farther would they have had to fall before your criteria of margin of safety been satisfied and allowed you to purchase more shares? And two, has the Disney Cap Cities merger gone as well as you would have hoped? And has the future prospects of Disney changed in your opinion? First question, uh, there, that's a good question on, 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 on Coke and Gillette because obviously we think about the businesses in, that we're the most familiar with and where we're committed. Uh, that neither one of those businesses got to the price that left us happy putting new money in, but we're quite happy, very happy owning those businesses and we'll be happy owning them for a very long time to come. But they, it's some evidence of where the market has been and is that, that even when they ran into some uh, tougher business conditions than they anticipated that their stocks did not go down to the prices that caused us to get excited about them. Charlie, you want to comment on that or the second part? Well, no, but I do want to remind people that the Dilly Bar is a Dairy Queen product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, uh, and they are good, I can tell you that. I wouldn't want the shareholders to believe that the commercial standards of this operation are, are faltering. <laughs> the, uh, generally speaking, trying to dance in and out of the companies you really love on a long-term basis has not been a good idea for most investors. And uh, we're quite content to sit, with, to sit with our best holdings. People have tried to do that with Berkshire uh, over the years. And I've, I've, I've had some friends that thought it was getting a little ahead of itself from time to time. And they thought they'd sell and buy it back cheaper. And it's pretty tough to do. You have to make two decisions right. You know, you have to buy it, you have to sell it right first, and then you have to buy it right later on. And usually you have to pay some tax in between. It, if you get into a wonderful business, best thing to do is usually is to stick with it. Coke and Gillette both experienced disappointments to their management uh, below what they anticipated a year, a year and a half ago, or whenever it was, uh, and below what we anticipated. But that will happen over time. It happens with some of our wholly owned businesses from time to time. Sometimes they do better than we anticipate, too. Uh, but it's not the nature that everything, uh, things that everything goes in a nice, straight, smooth line upward. Uh, you mentioned Cap Cities. Uh, uh, parts of Cap Cities uh, have done extraordinarily well, uh, for example. But in the network business, if you go back 30 years and look at what network has been on top, you find that no one stays on top or on the bottom uh, ind indefinitely. There, It's a competitive world, as I mentioned earlier, and, and sometimes your competitors Correct moves, your own incorrect moves, the world environment, all of those things can interrupt trend lines. Uh, I see nothing that's happened in the last year in terms of the long-term trend line of the blade and razor business, which is the one I refer to as inevitable Gillette. I mean, there are other businesses that are not in the same category as the blade and razor business. Coke, fortunately, has virtually its entire business in, in soft drinks, and so uh, it, it, it comprises almost 100 percent of the whole there. But I see nothing that uh, would change the long-term future of either the blade, or ra blade and razor business or Coke's position in the, in the soft drink business. Number one, 